Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and for today's lesson I hope you just breathe in that salt air and experience this painting of a lovely beach scene. In this painting I will be using various pastels and I have kind of a neutral, I'd say beachy colored palette. And this is one of the paintings I'm doing for the 12 Days of Healing in my Patreon group. This is me wearing my Monet Cafe apron. It's time to get started. I'm using a sheet of UART paper. It's their largest sheet that you can buy. And I decided just to take a whole sheet and divide it out into 12 sections for the 12 Days of Healing that we're doing during this crazy time in our world where uh, we're all somewhat quarantined. <laughs> what a great time to paint though, right? So I'm going to lead you through this. I am going to put this one on the regular Monet Cafe channel and uh, hopefully you will join me in this painting fun. And if you're one of my patrons or if you'd like to become one of my patrons and you participate in this particular painting, I would love for you to share it. Uh, I have a Facebook group just for my patrons and we're also patrons, you know, we're sharing uh, just all of the paintings from this 12 days of painting series in the Google album. So if you're one of my patrons, don't forget to put it in the Google al album. I'm loving seeing them all together. It's so fun for me to see you guys recreate from these lessons. And again, you can use your own reference photo. Try to keep it a similar subject matter. Um, and now let me talk a little bit about the process here. You've seen how I've already gone ahead with the typical getting in the trees, the darkest shapes first. And with pastels, as you probably know, uh, it's a process of layering. And I like to typically get my darkest layers down first and then glaze over top of them. Uh, it creates interesting colors and I'm trying to keep some of the texture, you'll see some tricks that I do later, to keep that beachy texture. And you can probably see in the little thumbnail reference photo I have up there. I just have a small little one because I got this um, from paintmyphoto.com. It's pmp-art.com. And I'm not really supposed to share other people's images. You can paint from them. Um, but I'm keeping it really small here. I think that'll be fine. But for my patrons, if you are one of my Patreon uh, members, then I will be sharing... Um, access to this photo so that you can use it to paint from this lesson if you would like to. So just know that patrons that I'll have that available for you guys. Um, but I want you to take note that I have put down in the sky uh, a more rich turquoise blues, a little bit darker value because I'm going to lighten it up a little bit later. Uh, and that's usually the way pastels work. We kind of work dark to light. And uh, I put down the darkest darks of those trees first. Now I'm gradually adding uh, kind of some um, more earthy dark green kind of to the tips of the trees. Look in the reference photo. You can even see, even though it's small, you can see how dark those trees are. Uh, I do make them gradually give the illusion of them being further away by some of those ones that trail off. I make them a lighter value. I also noticed, you can't see me doing it now, but in the trees in the reference photo, there was a little part where the waves or the, the land looked like it kind of curved right there where my hand is. It looked like the land kind of curved around. Uh, it made some interesting depth to the painting. And again, see how I picked that uh, beautiful kind of maroon color? It's darker. I know there's a little darker part back there in the water that looks kind of like it's a little uh, land sandbar or something like that back there. So it's all going on much darker than the final will be, but that's because I'm going to glaze over horizontal bands. It's going to kind of give it that flatness and that look of water laying on top. So um, you don't have to get carried away with getting that at first because you get your, your basic values and colors down and then you glaze over it. Very much like some of the videos I've done where we have any body of water and we create that, um, that glossiness over it by just glazing a pastel horizontally across from it. So um, I'm working quite a bit just tr trying to get some of the composition. The water was kind of um, going uh, kind of like waves do they come in and then they go out and they disperse in different places along the beach uh, once again here i am getting a richer color notice in the reference even though it's small you can see it's a really like pale washed out blue well that was you know a little plain and boring you got to punch up some color i actually really like this stage right here with just that beautiful turquoise and kind of the green oh now what am i doing here i decided i wanted to smooth out 
um, the beach surface and get some more layers on top of that to give it kind of that flatness, which was nice and I, I liked it, but I also kind of liked it before when I had it rather textural. But I'm gonna add that texture back again. I really liked the idea uh, in the photo of how it was like, uh, if you've been to the beach much, um, I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, and as a kid and a teenager, went to the beach all the time. So I was really used to that little thin glossiness of water. And I got a little reflection of the trees going on there. See, I made the trees a little wider, uh, taller, and I added like a, a water kind of uh, one third of the way up. So it kind of gives that little reflection uh, illusion there. I may end up covering it up later accidentally. You know, sometimes that's what we do when we're working. We work and we work and we work and we're like, man, I should have uh, left something right there <laughs> instead of working more on it. We get carried away. Um, that's why it's good to walk away. And uh, unfortunately, with these little paintings that I've been trying to do for the 12 Days of Healing, um, you know, I always think my life and schedule is going to chill out. And for some reason, uh, it hasn't been, which is fine. But I've been working on these um, kind of like just in a session and I haven't been doing a lot of getting up and um, stepping away to look at the at the process so just notice throughout this that it's a a constant um, kind of carving out the uh, water and the land with different values and colors and again I got darker values down before I do that final glaze on the water and then also there is some of that sand showing so uh, in a little while you're going to see me kind of uh, get a pastel that's a lighter value and get some of that idea of where the the sunlight is hitting the sand where it's dry it's going to be uh, lightest value where the sand is dry you may have noticed on the beach when little waves come up and then they recede they leave oh, right here I was trying some of the Diane Townsend's I was trying to find the right color and I, while I loved these colors the value was just too light for where I was at in this painting so I changed my mind uh, now this is where I'm gonna be adding in some of the lighter values in the sand again where the sand is drier that's where it's going to be a lighter value where the sand is more wet there's going to be a little um, little bit of a difference in value. It'll be a little bit darker. Um, all right, I'm going to just go ahead and add some music. Uh, I hope you liked my little beach waves and seagulls at the beginning. Oh, it just made me feel like taking a deep breath and a breath of fresh air and almost smell the salty air. Oh, I love it. Okay, enjoy, and in a bit you'll see me use a technique you've seen me use before on how I... Uh, get the foreground a little darker with a, a little bit more texture so that I can get a sandy um, kind of a textural surface of the sand in the foreground and then hang on even after that because I'm going to show you another neat little technique for adding little bits of pebble or grains or you know anything you want uh, to be kind of random and small so I got a neat way to show you how to do that so enjoy until then
Now, notice right here, you won't see the can of fixative, but you'll see me spraying that. I just make a um, kind of a light to medium coating of the Blair Low Odor Workable Fixative in the foreground, which definitely darkens it. And again, it also puts a little, another little layer of grit on top of the surface. So that's gonna help me with that texture in the foreground. Now I decided to add some clouds in the sky. They were in the reference photo and I was eh, questioning whether or not I would add the clouds or not. But when I did, I put down the darkest value first. Clouds aren't just white puff balls in the sky. They have to have something to lay onto. Usually they have some blue or, or uh, all kinds of different color shadows, but they, um, they have some darker value shadows. Um, so that's why I laid down a little bit of that darker value lavender. I didn't want them very prominent. Uh, I kind of liked the sky without the clouds too, but anyway, I was playing around with this. So this was kind of uh, eh, an experiment. <laughs> Okay, so keep watching, and in a minute I'm going to show you, after I get finished, I'll show you my little technique for adding little bits of, uh, you know on the beach how they have these little dark flecks of things, whether it be rock or pieces of broken shell, uh, none of them are going to be very big, but um, so I, I need to get those in, and there's a tendency when we try to mark it with our hand that we create a pattern and it looks kind of unnatural, so in just a minute I'll show you that technique. Right now here we go I've got the final painting it's, it's showing up a little dark here um, in the lighting I literally had this on my dining room table but I literally just have a little like a little cheese grater Parmesan cheese grater or lemon zest grater and I grate up little bits of those three values there just a little bit and I protected my other paintings with that piece of glassine because I had a lot of other paintings on that uh, piece of UART paper and um, the neat thing is these are not sticking down right now so if you need to move any of them you could literally get a little thing of tweezers but in a minute you'll see i actually cover up a certain area and there was some flex see right here i blow above my hand and i blew off some of those that got too high now how are these going to stick on here uh, because if you pick up the painting, they're just going to fall off. Well, what I did is I got a piece of glassine. Unfortunately, I didn't have a roller like a, a biscuit roller, <laughs> we say in the South, or a bread roller. So I used a, any, any rounded, smooth surface will work. I used my coffee cup just to roll and press down. So the glassine is protecting the painting, and you're literally just a, applying pressure in a rolling manner, which will push those little grains of pastel, those little flecks of pastel 
into the painting and I've used this technique multiple times I've used it for snow um, and it works quite well they they kind of they, they stick in there into the grooves of the pastel paper pretty good. So now you see how that added a little three-dimensionality? Now I just got a little thing. I've, I looked for a toothpick just to kind of push some of them away that I was uh, thought were too big or whatever. Uh, I couldn't find any toothpicks, so I just used a little pair of scissors here. Um, but anyway, this is the technique. It works really well. And um, this was a fun little painting. And again, I, I am thankful that... Uh, these 12 days of healing, they're healing for me too. I mean, you really do zone out as an artist. Now here I'm doing, I'm just giving the board a good tap on the back, which will release uh, any little extra pastel dust that may not have it adhered. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, whether you saw it on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel or on my Patreon page. And once again, here's that wonderful sound of the ocean and the seagulls. And I pray you guys are all staying safe and blessed. And as always, happy painting.